Hello and welcome to this short clip on how to balance equations. Um, no doubt you'll have done some of this already in your schooling, um, in Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4, particularly at GCSE, but what we're going to attempt to do is try and wrap that up and move it on a little bit and apply it to some more advanced level style um, equations. In fact, they're no different to any of the other equations you've seen. It's the same ideas applied, but they will look perhaps a little bit more complicated um, when you meet them. So this clip is designed to familiarise you with some of the techniques that you can use to try and make them easy to understand and tackle. So let's take a simple example. Uh, this time we're going to look at uh, sodium metal reaction with oxygen to make sodium oxide. You'll notice that the big numbers to the left of each of the um, formulae are printed in bold. There's a reason for that because they're called balancing numbers. Now, balancing number is quite important in, in balancing equations because it tells you how many times each, um, each species has to be multiplied by. We sometimes call a species a formula unit if we're talking about an equation. So we could have Na2O is the formula unit for sodium oxide, Na is the formula unit for sodium, and 2O2, sorry, O2 on its own, I beg your pardon, is the formula unit for oxygen gas. So what this means is there's four atoms of sodium in 4Na, two molecules of oxygen gas in 2O2, and each molecule contains two atoms of oxygen, so that makes four atoms of oxygen in total. And there are two formula units of sodium oxide. Notice I've said not two molecules. The reason for this will become clear when you do bonding. And in specific terms, um, we don't say that ionic substances such as sodium oxide exist as molecules. They exist as formula units within a lattice but this is covered by a separate video clip on lattices and ionic substances. So each formula unit of sodium oxide contains two sodiums and one oxygen. So this equation is balanced because we've used ba balancing numbers in bold to actually make sure that everything's multiplied up by the correct amount on each side. So this is the essential technique for balancing equations. You have to use balancing numbers what you can't change is the number of atoms in an oxygen molecule, so you couldn't suddenly make it O4, or O3, or O5, for example, and you couldn't suddenly change sodium oxide to Na3O or Na4O. They have to be fixed in this particular proportion. So it's important to remember, always use balancing numbers to balance equations. Don't try and adjust the individual numbers of atoms in each compound or molecule or formula unit because they're there due to the proportions in which electrons are either transferred or shared during bonding, covalent or ionic bonding that is.
So, um, here we have four examples. Um, some may have compounds in them that you haven't seen before. You may, may not have come across things like um, BeNO2-2 or manganese NO2-2, manganese nitrite. Um, it doesn't matter. It's exactly the same technique as before, um, except this time uh, some of the species, some of the formula units are a little bit more complex. So you'll notice I've put some tips up at the top, what we've just talked about. Um, I've also said about the most complicated looking formula unit. That usually has the greatest influence somewhere else, or elsewhere in the equation, so that's the place to start. So let's do the first one together, and then I'll leave you to pause the video clip and see if you can work out the remainder before playing it again to see if you got it right. So we've got uh, lead nitrate as the most complicated formula unit. What I mean by complicated really is the largest one, all the others are slightly more simple. You can also see that I corrected the number of lead atoms. The, the hawk-eyed amongst you might have spotted that I put two leads. That wasn't direct uh, or deliberate mistake. Um, I'm just, I put my hands up here and I say that was a slight oversight on my part. We've got one lead We've got two nitrogens and we've got six oxygen, so we've done a count of everything that's there. So now what we can do is start to assign balancing numbers elsewhere. Well, we only have one lead, so we don't have to assign another balancing number to the lead oxide, because to do so would be to multiply up the lead oxide too many times. What's interesting, though, is there's two nitrates, and there's only one nitrate over on sodium nitrate on the far left. So we can safely say that we can double up the sodium nitrate on the left. And by doing that, we've not only balanced the nitrates, but we've also balanced the sodium. So now we can quick do a quick check to see if there's the same number of each atom on each side. So by doing a quick count of everything on both sides, you can see that the sodiums have been balanced, the nitrogens have been balanced, and the oxygen has been balanced, and in addition the lead has been balanced. So now it's a good idea to pause the video clip and see if you can use that technique on the other three. First of all, identify where the most complicated or largest formula unit is and see if you can spread out where it affects other species elsewhere in the equation. So we pause the video, come back to it when you've finished and we'll see if we agree. So hopefully this uh, these versions agree with yours. Uh, I did throw one that already had the balancing done, just to test you out, see if you're still awake. Um, they probably won't do that in an exam, but they're likely to do ones of a similar standard to the ones you see in front of you. So it's worth going online, maybe finding some worksheets of uh, balancing equations. There's tons of them about. Some of you have the answers on them, and going and practicing some, or maybe going to the textbook and trying some of your own. Um, it's the kind of thing that you need to be quite fluid and efficient at doing because the problem is not so much the balancing skill that's required at the time. You don't get much time in an exam to do this. You might get one mark for balancing it. And if you're sitting there sort of struggling for five minutes trying to go back and forth, it's going to waste your time. You need to be very quick and, and quite efficient, like I've just said, on doing this, otherwise you'll find that it'll be a bit of a time waster in exams. And for a silly reason, it's a very basic skill, but one that confounds a lot of people, obviously, when they first start A-level, so it's well worth taking some time to practice it. Okay, so hopefully you found this clip useful. Um, please do go away and try some, and take them to your teacher, take them to subject extensions if you need to. Uh, but in the meantime, thanks for your time, thanks for listening, and uh, see you soon. Bye.